Hi friends, if you are an architect or an engineer or any professional attached with construction or real estate industry and don't know and using PT technology in your projects, then needless to mention, you are not only losing huge opportunities to add value in your career, but also in your projects vis-a-vis -vis in your organization. Hence, to get hugely benefited, you can't afford to miss this informative video anymore. Stay tuned and watch till end and unlock the hidden potentiality. Hello friends, this is Avijit Datta, B.Tech, PGDBA from IIT Kharagpur, Fellow and Chartered Engineer, Registered Valuer of IBBI and IGBC AP vis-a-vis ESC and LBS of KMC Kolkata. Hello friends, this is Smart Engineers and you are watching the interesting topic pre-stress concrete system or technology to unlock value of your projects or properties and save or earn in huge. In Smart Engineers, our motto is to discuss about the subject matter which are not covered adequately in our college course curriculum, but there is a huge demand or requirement in tactical or professional field or industry. Let's try to bridge this huge gap between the academia and industry and develop our country. Before we proceed further, request you all to subscribe our this informative channel and press bell icon for immediate all future updation and notification. Friends, if you have not watched our earlier interesting videos, that is how to earn IGBC AP certification in next two weeks time and that too in first attempt and also the second video that is how to become IBBI registered valuer and earn huge, please watch them and get hugely benefited. You will get the links in description below. Now let us go through our main presentation of pre-stress concrete or PT. Do you know what is the most consumed materials in the world? Yes, you will surprise to note that second only to water, concrete is the most consumed materials. And we produce near about 3 metric ton equivalent to 1 cubic meter per year per person in this planet. For construction and building industry, if we club together all materials we require, concrete is as twice in volume. And concrete is not a new material for us. Ancient times also, we used concrete in various structures. As you can see that Bedouin traders had developed a concrete like materials and in ancient Rome also we have seen that concrete used as a building material. Now why to go for PT? So if we see the advantages of PT in our real estate and construction industry the list is very long. Few of them are mentioned here. We'll get thinner concrete members, reduction in rebar use, decreased dead loads, and there are others as you can see here. I am not going to read all these things. Please pause your video and review in your convenient time. So advantages are many. So now if we see that all on a sudden why people are started talking about PT. RCC got evolved to pre-stress concrete with time. There are various examples are here and there are 
in our daily life about peace tracing. As you can see it here. But basic concept in terms of engineering, you can see the evolution of various techniques in concrete technology as depicted here. Pristace concrete basically developed to overcome the natural weakness in tension that concrete cannot sustain. Here some examples between normal RCC and PT. Now let's understand the basic concept of pistressing. It's very interesting. Let's take example of a simply supported beam as depicted here. As you can understand that on application of load that member gets deflected downwards and tension generates at the bottom part of that member where compression would be at the upper part. As we know that concrete is strong enough to take the compression but very weak for the tensile force. So we need to imply reinforcement to counteract that tension at the bottom part of that beam. But in terms when this member span is much more vis-a-vis -vis applied load is also considerable in nature, then alone that reinforcement would not be sufficient to sustain that tensile stress generated at the bottom. So to reduce that tensile stress as at bottom, we need to apply the counter stress by means of compressive force to reduce that tensile stress at the bottom of that member. And to achieve that, the technology we use is called pre-stressing. In pre-stressing, we install the tendons or PT strands at the bottom and considering the design, we do that stressing of that tendons either before concreting or post-concreting. Whatever would be the method, but after completion of that pre-stressing process and when we plug all those pre-stressed tendons automatically compression would be generated and that compression will counteract or reduce the substantial amount of tension which generated earlier and reduce its volume so that that particular member or that design reinforcement could take that reduced amount of tensile stress. So this is the main principle on which pre-stressing system works. The behavior of concrete member when it is in simply supported or in cantilever supported form this is the difference between normal reinforced concrete beam and pre-stressed concrete beam easily understandable. Now let us observe an animated presentation to understand the pre-stressing processes.
this presentation is self explained in nature application of load and generation of stresses tension and compression sides of that beam member And we know that concrete is very good in compression but very weak in tension. That's why rebars are required to take the tensile stress. And tensile stress generated at the bottom of the concrete for simply supported beams and as it is very weak there to improve the characteristic of concrete we apply that pre-stressing technology to generate compression there to reduce the tension so that concrete can resist that there are two, method, two methods of pre-stressing. One is pre-tensioning, as you can see here. It is generally done in workshop for smaller dimensional members, say light post, railway slippers, etc. And this one is the post-tensioning method, which is generally applied to the larger members in site, say bridge gutters or large beams or slabs in any building structure. You can see here, it is a post tensioning method. These two methods we will see in detail in our further or subsequent slides. Now let us understand that what are the major advantages of PT buildings. So as you can see that there is a huge savings in materials due to the thinner concrete member sizes which is approximately 20% uses of rebars which if designed appropriately can reduce by 60 to 75% decrease in dead load we can have more economical design where we can increase the floor net lettable area reduction in building height by decreasing the cost of building cladding vertical mechanical and services elements and the PT system very effectively used where span is more than 7 meters quicker construction cycle time could be 7 to 15 days increased performance improved seismic behavior, reduce deflection and vibrations, improved crack control and waterproofing properties, we can have longer spans with fewer columns which gives the flexibility in floor layouts. Also reduced lifetime cost, overall maintenance, 
lower than conventional buildings reduce building heights also results in energy saving also we can have potential lead credits for green building ratings like any system pt system also has some challenges as you can see it here but the main thing is that we have to acquire appropriate knowledge about this system to overcome all these challenges and get hugely benefited from practical project site what i have seen the main challenges pertain to lack of knowledge or expertise of our consultant and our contractors but nowadays all these are available just we have to try to search the proper person who could guide us for the proper engineering design of pt system and the contractors to execute the job in case if you are interested but not getting the proper consultant or execution vendor may contact us for further guidance if we see the presentation here that by applying pt technology we can have the similar numbers of storied in smaller height with lesser structural member size and other parameters decrease in floor height as you can see because the beams are very limited here and also the depth of beams are reduced due to the pt system this is the height comparison between pt and conventional rcc system simplification of form work pt can be applied on various types of structure as depicted here and these are few examples from practical project sites this one is the flat plate type of structure now you can see that flat plate with shear wall concept in residential building nowadays it is very popular another picture of the project this picture is of flat slab with drop cap or drop panel bonded slab or flat beam structure this one is the buffle slab and slab band and rib kind of structure also along with beam and slab type of structure where you could use pt transfer floors or transfer beam this is an interesting concept perhaps you are heard about here when in a particular building there are mixed use design say for example the basements are designed for the car parking ground and first floor for the commercials and the upper elevations for residential or office buildings so in needless to mention for design of those kind of uses the alignment of beams and slabs changes and to transfer the loads from one floor to another we need to take care about transfer floors or transfer beams and for that sometimes we get the beam depths are much more 
because the loads are coming on that are huge. To get that managed, we could use PT system in these floors for beams and slab construction to take care about this huge load vis-a-vis -vis larger spans. Methods of pre stressings are generally broadly divided into two that is, external pre stressing and internal pre stressing. Internal pre stressing further subdivided another two sub methods that is, pre tensioning and post tensioning. And post tensioning is also further subdivided into two methods that is, unbonded and bonded. We will see all these types of pre stressing and tensioning methods in our subsequent presentation. Now, let us see the methods of pre stressing. This is the external type of pre stressing, it is not very common in our day to day life, but has some specific uses in specific case. Post to that, as you have seen, that uh, methods of pre stressing, which is generally internal in nature, there are two sub methods that is pre tensioning and post tensioning. These are the details about the pre tensioning method. And this is the presentation of pre tensioning method. where we first apply tension in the tendon, then do concrete and post to that we release the tendon and develop the stress on the concrete. In contrary to this, the second method is post tensioning. In post tensioning, as you can see in this presentation, we lay all these tendon ducts inside the concrete and complete the concrete method or concrete pouring. And once concrete achieves say 50% of its design strength, we start doing stretching of these tendons. And once concrete achieves 100% of its strength, say after 28 days, we also complete our stressing and complete the pre-stressing method. Now, if we see the major differences between pre-tensioning and post-tensioning, these are the interesting considerations. Application of post tensioning system we can have in large structures, say bridges, slabs, or beams in any building, water tank, concrete pile, thin cell structure, nuclear, nuclear power plant, etc. Type of post tensioning as we have seen. There are two types, one is bonded and another is unbonded. These are the important considerations of these two. This is the schematic presentation of bonded post tensioning and unbonded post tensioning method. Bonded system assembly. unbonded system components, pros and cons of bonded and unbonded systems, where we should use what kind of systems, please go through.
presentation of post tensioning how it works stress diagram due to pt when is post tensioning cost effective as we can see that span larger than 7 meter it is very effective system now factors affecting cost of post tensioning mention here for analysis and design of post tensioning or pre stress concrete system we should follow these institutional guidance now general comparison of rcc slab versus pt flat slab depicted here for various panel sizes cost analysis of transfer slab or beam if we see where pt used only in beam portion now it is it is coming like this now in this part of our presentation we will see the detail methodology of bonded and unbonded system of pistressing technique at first we will go through the unbonded post tensioning system let's observe a presentation or video taken from website for our academic purpose various components of unbonded post tensioning systems as you can see and the sop that is standard operating procedures of post tensioning system in unbonded method concreting completed
in unbonded post tensioning system these strands or tendons are independent and no grouting is required only the end portion plugged by means of suitable construction chemical along with the normal type of unbonded post tensioning system here also we would like to apprise you that in case of any modification post to that pre-stressing works how we could do that maintaining the proper methods and procedures here a large cutouts are being made because sometimes this is also required to execute at project sites based on the marketing feedback or change in design one second the contrasting presentation between two structures conventional and pt This is the scheme of unbonded post tensioning system and these are the various components we require for this system
Now let's understand the bonded post tensioning system. Once again, we took help of an animation taken from the website for our easy understanding of that system. Components of bonded PT system, as you can see, the strands, barrel and wedge, wedge plates, bearing plate, seething duct. Now we'll see all these in much detail. This one is the anchorage assembly, barrel, bearing plate, onion loop, as it looks like onion. Seething duct, wedges. Now let's see some pictures from the practical project sites. Here you can see the dead end anchorage, how it's installed. Pore strip along with stressing end anchorage. That PT being installed in the floor here.
tendon profiles you can see how it's laid in the slab also we need to keep the grout vent stressing jack assembly how it installed stressing work in progress here these are the pressure gauge stressing machine with pressure gauge being installed cleaning of tendons in process before grouting mixing of grout is in progress here grouting being done checking for consistency of grout now let's have some glimpses of projects where post tensioning done it's the beam framing with conventional system this one is the pt cables layout at column junction in flat plate pt cable layout for one way slab and beam large cantilever with unbonded pt system large column free span with unbonded pt system large column free span with unbonded pt system once again pt slab with drop cap by unbonded pt system very less reinforcement used in this unbonded system pt slab with drop cap by unbonded pt system vis a vis let's have some case studies of few of our projects as you can see this is the residential building designed by both the system conventional vis a vis pt framing system and the difference is very easily understandable this is the commercials these are the considerations taken during the case study of the said school building once again it's a school building in ahmedabad design in both system pt vis a vis rcc frame to understand the differences here it is the commercial for the said project analysis of long term deflection in that project along with the stresses acted on various beams and slabs now as we have already seen the concept and application in various projects the question would be what are the tools of the trade by which we could use the same in our projects so for your easy reference we have collected all these things for your reference as well as use this is the scope of work these are the basic material specification we need to adhere essential equipment we need to mobilize for proper execution of pt works things to be ensured for proper execution please take care installation stage
स्ट्रेसिंग स्टेज सेफ्टी प्रिकॉशंस ग्राउटिंग स्टेज ग्राउटिंग सीक्वेंस और प्रोसीड्यूर एंड एट द एंड क्वालिटी रिकॉर्ड्स वी नीड टू टेक केयर फॉर द इंटीयर प्रोसेस ऑफ प्री स्टेशिंग वर्क होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द ह्यूज पोटेंशियलिटी ऑफ पीटी सिस्टम्स व्हिच आर स्टिल अनटैप्ड due to non availability of proper knowledge and skill set of our consultant engineers and execution vendors but you could take the advantages of this pt system in your personal career as well as in your organization and earn huge in your project execution for any sort of further guidance you may contact us where we will be happy to support you to get the untapped benefit in your career as well as in your organization thank you hope you find this informative video very useful and further if you wish to implement the same in your projects or organization and add or earn values may contact us for further support also share with your friends and contacts you feel will be of their use because sharing is caring thank you all hope to see you in next video